Learning by Doing presents The Mad Dash. Watch us every Tuesday morning on YouTube. Join me and multiple crew members as I take our Crowley catamaran from Sydney, Australia all the way up around the top to Lombok in Indonesia. Made possible by our patrons. Thank you very much, you guys, and also our sponsors here on board for this trip. Thanks so much, guys. You can also follow us along on Marine Traffic or Vessel Finder. Trade Runner is the name. All right, guys, welcome back. Another video here, Sailing Learning by Doing. Last week you saw we were and I up at the top of Fraser Island, Kagari. Great time up there, climbing the, up to the uh, Waterfall Lighthouse. And today we pulled up anchor there. Uh, what was it? Probably before um, before sunrise actually, it was still a little bit dark, didn't film that. And we are heading towards Lady Musgrave. So we're just going straight across past Lady Elliot towards Ma Lady Musgrave. It's about 80 miles, something like that. Uh, not a lot of wind today forecasted, but yeah, we're just going for it. It's um, That's the reason we left a bit early, because we have to get to Musgrave before dark, obviously, because it's a lagoon, it's a you know coral, coral entrance. Got to get the tides right, that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, well, that's where we're heading to today. But before we get to that action, and a lot of you have been asking for this, Marie sent me a video about her, how what she's up to in France with her pregnancy and what she's doing and everything. So we'll start off with that today. A little catch up for Marie, and then we'll get to the action with sailing with We Were up to Lady Musgrave. Enjoy the video, guys. Good day, everyone. So I am in direct from the hammock, probably my favorite spot since I am in France. And after a bit more than a month in France, especially in Dula, it's the little village I'm living in Savoie. And yeah, I was expecting to do a little update before and having a lot of things to show to you. But actually, uh, my pregnancy going super well, but I have to slow down quite a lot. So I didn't do much activities and hiking and good spot to showing to you a little bit, but yeah, not much. Uh, I am here for months with my family at my dad and mom place. It's a really nice spot to relax. Um, even if I can't move much, I mean, I can't really walk anymore. Uh, it's too painful and I have really quick contractions, a bit the same if I'm standing up for a long time, even if I'm not moving. So I can cook a little bit, uh, I can walk around the garden a little bit, but yeah, not the sportive activity, so it's changing a little bit. Normally with Vernon I'm doing quite a lot, but yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm accepting that this is a what my body needs right now and that's what the baby needs right now and so yeah I have just to accept so yeah the hammock is the place I'm spending a lot of time so about the pregnancy itself um, I'm doing good the baby is doing good too um, when I arrived in France I had almost straight away an appointment with the midwife I was kind of waiting for it, not being completely worried, but I did no exam in Australia, so yeah, I, I was a bit waiting for someone saying, okay, everything is good. So yeah, I had this birth appointment and I was able to hear for the first time the, the heartbeat of the baby. That was really amazing and made a bit the pregnancy real. Uh, before that, it was a bit like an abstract thing in my head. So that was really good. And so because I was quite late for the whole process of exams than you have normally in France. Um, uh, I'm sorry for the noise. I think there's some tractors cutting the grass around. Um, so uh, because I was late uh, on all the exam and process that normally you have when you're pregnant in France, uh, to catch up with all of this, so doing all my bl blood tests, um, everything was okay, I had no trouble at all, I had everything I need, even not need any supplements or anything of vitamins, I was all good. And after that I had my first ultrasound, that was not the more easy exam for me, um, the baby was not really okay to show himself correctly, so the guy has to 
crucially a bit on the belly and tried to check that everything was okay but it was quite painful and I was in pain for a few days but I was really happy to know that everything was okay and uh, now I have more normal following I have one appointment every one month one month and a half and I did the second ultrasound already because the first one was light it was a bit like close together and this exam was a bit more nice and was a bit longer to check about everything and my dad filmed a little bit about that so here are the footages Alors il est en, en siège le bébé, en siège ça veut dire qu'on a, qu a la tête qui est en haut, ouais, exactement, regardez. regardez, son dos est de ce côté, d'accord, plutôt du côté gauche, on voit bien sur cette photo le début de la colonne, d'accord, ouais. là on va cet endroit là, un petit peu plus haut, on va mesurer le tour du ventre, 95 e centimètre, on peut dire qu'il a plus tard, non, il est en le dos du, on continue, ça me surprend pas, le cœur, les valves, je vais passer entre les deux jambes, vous regardez pas, vous ne me filmez pas si vous pas savoir. Si je... <rire> regardez pas la fin du groupe. Euh, bon, bah, c'est bien. Eh bien, il va très bien bébé. Ça vous, j'ai rien à dire particulier. Ça veut dire qu'il n'y a pas l'air avec les choses. Oui, il a bien sorti. Oui, bah, ventre, de, de la hein. famille du papa et c'est des bons bébés. Hein. Ils sont tous costauds. Oui. <rire> Mais je crois que ce bébé n'a pas l'air au <rire> After knowing that the baby was healthy and active as I can feel him kicking, as you see, I started to dig and buy around all the baby items to welcome him or her correctly in the cold alpine autumn. A whole new world for me. Washable nappies, as we don't want to deal with throwaway ones on the boat, especially in Indonesia, who has no garbage treatment, warm pyjamas, as it is really cold in November here, and of course, diverse baby clothes with a tiny tendency for marine prints. This is really so cute. Little whales, little fish, I am loving it. My grandmother worked hard to knit a bunch of wool layette with neutral color for a baby boy or a baby girl. An incredible work that I'm loving so much. As I am spending most of the time at home, I am beading a lot, creating some jewelry. It is something I can do from my bed or from the couch easy. And of course, my biggest comfort is food. I am really enjoying homemade food and local specialties as the Petite Friture, a bit our version of fish and chips here in summer in Savoie. We have also the chance to live really close to farmers and can buy them directly meat, cheese and vegetables. Out of that, I am laying down a lot, having nap competition with my cat. And here we are back to my little updates live from the hammock. So yeah, I am really, really grateful to be in a place in countryside with a big garden in summer. My family is really helping me. They are driving me around when I have appointments, when I need to do some shopping or even when just to go to the lake, they, they are really coming with me and they have a lot of time so they, they are not bothered by my non-ability of moving so it, it's quite cool for that. Um, I, I'm feeling a bit lonely to be honest in France. Um, you know, after three years living on the boat full time, I lost a little bit the contact with the friends I had here. Um, we lived really different things and like I I'm not at all angry at them. Like it's just natural. You are not there for their everyday life and it's a bit the same in return. You can't expect anything different. I'm not living bad, really not. Uh, I, I am so lucky to be where I am. I was telling to my mom yesterday that in comparison of being on the boat because I have some contractions quite easily if I am doing a bit exercise and stuff, even if it's hard to slowing down, it is so cool to know that if anything is going wrong, I am in a place I can easy drive or call my midwife or yeah, 
going to the hospital if I was needed. And if I was on the boat, I know I would be way more worried sailing and knowing that for sometimes a long time I can't reach anyone. And probably even the movement and the things would be really, really tiring for me. So yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Just a bit hard to be far from Vernon. Um, yeah, I'm missing him more and more. Uh, I think the first weeks that that was okay because I was kind of busy. I have a lot of things to, to think the appointments and all of this stuff and now that it's a bit coming down yeah uh, i realized that i would love to share all the new feelings and stuff were happening in my life a bit more but yeah that, that that that's the game i think we did anyway the good choice to to do like this so that's great This lady, <clears throat> that's Lady Elliot Island, we're just passing by now. So that means we've done about 46 miles since we left. We were initially going to actually stop here and um, go snorkeling. There's a, there's a lot of manta rays and stuff here and it's pretty pristine. But um, because the this, this swell is coming from the southwest, it just won't be comfortable in there. There's no atoll or anything, you're anchored out in the sea and uh, it'll just be rolly as heck so we're just cruising on by i've never stopped there actually but just a few people told me it's a really good stop when it's calm but today's not the day now we're heading on to lady musgrave which is an atoll we can get inside be much calmer heading on there it's about another 20 miles 22 miles or something from here so about like four or five hours and we'll be there uh squalls all around us as you can see water spouts everywhere but um yeah just cruising along we was having breakfast dry muesli it's good breakfast yeah we call it muesli right you don't want some milk or yogurt or fruit just muesli where there's like butt seeds strong Uh, what about your 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 iPad? Uh, waterproof? Yeah, it's pretty good. Go up, go up, go up. Otherwise you're gonna lose him. Okay, that's good. There you go, you see him? Yep, try and pull it on the back step. All right, we're rolling up on Lady Musgrave. We're just going to sail around the corner, sail up to the entry and um, check out the entry. We're a little bit uh, early. The tide's still coming out, so it might still be a really strong current, but um, we'll see when we get there. I think it's in an hour, it's complete low tide, so the current will be stopped and then we can go in, but um, we'll just go and check it out, see how it looks. So we're parked up outside here, outside the um, entrance. Now, as you can see, there's a, a yacht just went past. Well, we're on. There's a mooring buoy that's right out here, specifically for the purpose of hooking on to when the tides aren't right. 
So you can just hook on here and we just grabbed it and a guy went past us and went in and you know, full, full props to him, he's going for it. But there's about a four or five knot current coming out still for another hour. And he's going for it, but he's barely moving. It'll take him 35 minutes to get in. And that's fine, you know, whatever if you're in a rush. But let's say like something goes wrong with his engine or his rudder. Or a rope goes in the propeller. Any, any just little thing that can happen. He's in a 15 meter wide channel with coral on both sides and suddenly he's going sideways at five knots and can hit anything. And uh, it's just not really worth it in my view. Like in half an hour, that current's going to go back to one knot and in 45 minutes it'll be slack tide and we can just motor on in with zero risk. And then an hour after that the tide will be going in slightly which would even be easier. So sort of a no-brainer. Um, you know, when you toss it up, if we get inside, if we would go in now and we'd be inside half an hour earlier, what are we doing with that half an hour of our lives? We're probably just going to sit there and make a coffee the same as we could be doing right now. So like, if there was three meter waves out here and you're in there it was better, you know, like you'd be like, okay, well that's something different, but it's completely calm here. There's no real difference apart from we'll be going in with, and I don't want to try to say that I'm in the right or anything, it's just my way of looking at it, like you've got to balance out risk and reward, and in this case, the reward isn't really anything, and the risk is your boat, so it's my view. If you go back a few videos ago, oh, about 30, um, me and Marie visited Lady Musgrave and this island and had an amazing time here watching the turtles nesting and all these birds nesting as well in this forest. And you'll hear there's still a few birds around, but hardly any, and there's only one variety. The ones nesting in the trees are all gone and there won't be any turtles nesting either so everything's very uh well this is how i'd seen it before the last time we were here everything was nesting all the turtles were coming up the beach that was absolutely incredible the only thing that would be comparable i guess would be when the nests are all hatching and there's baby chicks everywhere and baby turtles coming out can't imagine that'd be simultaneous but um that'll be pretty cool to watch as well but yeah i mean it's always cool to be here in Lady Musgrave. It's just an amazing place, a bit of a jewel really and really accessible. Pretty much anyone can get in here if you own a boat. There's even like small little you know 16 foot little runabouts out here. Uh, pick the right weather you can come out here and uh, anchor in the thing and good fishing around and amazing spot. Really really cool place. We're only staying the one day. Uh, leaving again in the morning. This is called the Mad Dash for a reason. Wow, what a stunner of a place this is. So cool. There's about a million birds out there. I guess they're all about to come back after being out fishing all day. Um, yeah, when I walk back through the forest here, there's probably going to be a lot more birds than there was when I came through before. Another hour till sunset, but it's got a real sunset vibe about it already because of the clouds, but I'm over on the other, the leeward side of the island now and there's um, yeah, no wind so it's bloody beautiful here. It's pretty windy over that side, it's not very nice but over here is awesome.
I'll just get a book and come over here. But, um, yeah, look at all these birds. Wow, what a rad place. This place is unreal, really. So cool to be able to just come out here. I mean, we sailed the whole day today. Uh, we left at around 2 and got here around 12. So yeah, 10 hours. But um, 65, nearly 70 miles. We actually sailed a lot of it, which is pretty cool. I think we motored the first three, three hours or something because we were in the lee of uh, Fraser Island. After that, I, you know, pulled out the screecher and then motored like that for half an hour and then turned off one engine, motored like that for half an hour, then throttled back on that engine for half an hour and then just killed it. And, and we just kept the same speeds and we were sort of, the last three hours, we were sort of doing sevens and eights and uh, ended up, yeah, getting here an hour or so too early, like you saw. Had to go on the mooring boy, but all good. No problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> Without the mainsail, we're a little bit compromised, but hasn't been that big a drama until now because up to Brisbane, it was all inland waterway, so we mowed it anyway. Then we had okay wind up to Double Island, and then inside Fraser Island was all just motoring inside, uh, inside the Sandy Straits anyway, you know. And it would have probably gone in there even if it had a mainsail because I wanted to go to Tin Can Bay and that, so... From that point of view, we didn't really lose much. And then today, wouldn't have made any difference with a mainsail. We were sort of sailing nearly, well, 120, 140 all day. So the screecher would have been it anyway at that angle. We wouldn't have had a main up. And then we've only got about another 70, 80 miles to um, Roslyn Bay. And I'm hoping the sail is going to get delivered there. So it hasn't really been that big a um, bummer, really. You know, there's been, we haven't, you know, been forced to do any upwind legs or like sit out a leg because we can't go upwind. So that's been pretty cool so far. Um, the chart plot is going to be waiting for us in Roslyn Bay already. Um, Raymarine sent that a couple of days ago. So that's, that's really good. Stoked on that. All right, guys, that wraps up another video. Hope you enjoyed that one. Yeah, these are, as I said a couple other times, these are very blog style, um, sort of relying a lot just on showing you guys the the way we're moving north how we're where we're going that sort of thing i'm um, not getting very cinematic but i'm saving up all of that motivation and artistic uh, inside of me for when marie comes back and then we'll be you know back in indonesia and we'll be showing you some good stuff uh next week we'll be yeah i'll be putting the new mainsail on i guess and um going from keppel up to the Percy's. i think that's the route we're going to be doing next week um we'll have a uh, new crew and yeah i hope you'll enjoy that one um i feel like we're really just getting into the the start the good part of the trip now you know we've got trade winds we're inside the reef we're howling along um boat's going to be back in good neck with the sail and the um chart plotter back so we'll be yeah full complement and ripping along again gotta give a big thanks to all the patrons you guys are amazing double thumbs up a few new ones on board this week which is really really good to see we've been in a bit of a drought with them i guess just because the videos have been a bit boring but you know just what it is is what it is without marie here i'm just a bit lacking a beautiful smile is just uh, that's what all you guys like i guess but anyway there's a bit of that in this video so hopefully uh yeah that'll keep some people happy anyway yeah yeah thanks thanks very much patrons and, and all you guys who like and comment every week on these videos as well that makes a big difference the algorithm is a dastardly beast that i can't wrap my head around we're obviously not really killing it on youtube here but um we're trying our best and uh, we'll just keep at it and hope you guys follow along um as we're going along yeah that's all we can ask we'll just keep making videos and um yeah give it a like give it a thumbs up see you next week guys bye bye